And one day, he come across with a prover, maybe malicious prover, on the internet. And the prover makes the following claim. There's no audio. Yeah, and there is no audio. It's supposed to be an uh, audio here. So I intentionally make it a Japanese sentence, and I know most of you don't know Japanese. It happens in the ZKP world. Uh, Verifier don't actually know what the prover is going to claim. And the prover is just saying random uh, trashes. For example, the prover claims that his circuit is a KCAC hash circuit, or the prover is claiming that his circuit is a SHA-256 circuit. But who knows? He may make false, false claims, right? And to verify these claims, the, the verifier need, to, need someone to help her. One way to solve the problem is you leverage a trusted third party that can help you to understand the claim. And here, in this example, we are using Google Translate, where you trust Google to translate this sentence for you. And yeah. And in the ZKP world, it's usually called a trusted setup, where you rely on a trusted third party to do some computation for you to identify the content of the circuit. Usually, it's the people use Grossistine or Plunk to do such task. However, such process require a lot of provers' resources, and it also introduce additional trust. The prover also need to do some very uh, computation extensive uh, computation, like MSM or FFT. Well, another way is you, the verifier do the work by herself. In this example, you learn the Japanese, then you, obviously you can understand this sentence. But the, 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 this verifier will do a lot of work to understand the prover's circuit. He, she needs to at least scan the circuit where a circuit can be potentially very large. So the verifier computation in this uh, solution is very expensive. And there is another solution where we are going to introduce is based on a compiler. And look at these sentences. You can find that there is a pattern, actually, in these sentences where you may notice that they begin, all of, all of them begin with the same prefix. And by leveraging this kind of pattern, you can actually uh, make the very first computation easier. And in this case, you are going to are actually going to translate one sentence and you're going to understand the rest. So let's dive into the technical details where here is an example circuit of computing a very simple uh, computation. But if you compile the circuit, you will find that this, compu this compiled circuit, this RNCS compiled circuit, is actually very large. It's on the orders of 100 megabytes. But the source code is actually very small, very, very short. And you may already notice that the, source, the majority of the source code is doing this computation. It's just a simple multiplication where you can express it with several bytes instead of 100 megabytes. So the verifier, for, for the verifier to understand the circuit, she doesn't need to look at the circuit, the compiled circuit itself, where potentially it can be 100 megabytes. She can look at the source code, or in our term, it's the hint from the compiler, where a compiler will tell you that this circuit is just simply uh, repeat this sentence. So. Here, I'm going to announce our revolutionary compiler, 
where we don't have an off official name for it. I, I would tentatively call it log compiler because we are inspired from this term. It's called log space uniform circuit. And the circuit is actually, the log space uniform circuit is actually described this uh, property where the circuit can be generated from a very small program. And our compiler will initially support Ginox front-end language at, during the launch. And we will gradually expand our compilation to Plunky, Halo, or Circle, or even more. And our plan for this open source is projected to be on May 2024, together with our prover. So it's not only the compiler, it's going to be an end-to-end prover tool chain. So the overall architecture of this compiler is the following. You take the programming language, it's described by a Go language, and you pass it to the circuit compiler. And the circuit compiler will output a circuit that has special structures, special substructures. And the, for the verifier to understand the circuit, it only needs to look at each individual uh, sub-circuit instead of look at the whole circuit itself. So the verifier can save the computation by orders of magnitude. And this new compiler potentially could enable a re recursive snark where because the verifier circuit is orders of magnitude smaller, so we can directly recurse on this verifier and make everything infinitely recursive. So, okay, let's talk about the prover part. We have the we have also the state-of-the-art prover, where it's a GKR-based prover, and it can operate more than three million constraints per second on a single CPU, BN254. And here is the overall structure of the prover, where on the on this side, this side, the prover, this prover on the middle side is proof structure, and on the on this side is a verifier. So the end-to-end -end experience is like is like you write a circuit program, you execute it on our prover, and the finally you can verify this proof on the Ethereum chain. So that's Okay, that's never done, that has never done before in this scale. We can verify billion size circuit on chain. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so, if you really want to look at our documentation, you you can look at the paper we pre we presented, and it's called the Libra and Pianist, two papers. And you can, if you look up my name, you can, you can search these papers. So these are technical documentations we can provide right now. And after we open source the code, you can look at the code directly. Another nice property is we can infinitely horizontal scale, where you can add a lot of machines without any overhead. And that's, that's, let me explain why other people cannot do this and why we can do this. So if we do look at the Fry protocol, the Fry protocol has a problem where it relies on the FFT, FFT but FFT itself has a problem of dis distributed computing, where in the middle of FFT, if you look at it, there is a linear size uh, communication between machines where we, in our experiment, if you look at a sub-circuit of size 1 million, and if you look at 200 machines, they are going to communicate gigabyte of data if you use FFT or FRI. And this is not possible to decentralize. You can only place these machines in the same, I mean, in the same data center to achieve this distributed computing. We modify the fry. We actually replace the fry in our 
Provers framework. We use the bivariate KZG introduced by our one of our previous paper. It's called Pianist. And this is very, I mean, this is te too technical to introduce here. You, maybe you can take a screenshot or take a photo. And so the nice property of this bivariate KZG is it replaces the FFT. OK, if you, anyone wants to take a photo, just do that. So we replace the, the, the FFT using this new polynomial commitment scheme. And the nice property is, due to the KDG, the nice property is we only require constant communication between different machines. And if you combine with the GKR protocol we, in a prover, each node only needs to send or receive, in total, 100 kilobytes of data, which you can I mean, with 100 kilobytes of data just communication, you can basically decentralize your prover globally. So let's talk about decentralization. Uh, we did an experiment on verifying 200, uh, sorry, 20, uh, 32k K signatures, and the result is pretty uh, impressive. We only take five to six seconds to do that. And the hardware requirement is going to be 64 of these machines, handheld machines, globally distributed. And well, in the experiment, we don't globally distribute this, we just connect to the same Wi Fi. But we observe that the data transmission is very low, and we think it's possible to globally distribute these machines. So the hardware requirement will be very minimal, and it can potentially enable, uh, I mean, enable a new diagram where validators can purchase a very cheap machine and join the network to collaboratively do proving. Next is about a new proposal. Actually, not so new. We proposed it last year, and. So it's all by details in one slot, where in current Ethereum solution, we have almost 1 million validators. And due to scalability of Ethereum, they cannot process 1 million validators in one slot. They have to divide it into 32 different slots, where each slot has only uh, 30,000 validators. And this can cause problems because people need to wait for a lot of slots or blocks to get a finality, to get a confirmed. In this simple example, you need to wait three slots to get your transaction confirmed. And in real Ethereum, you need to wait for like 20 slots to get your transaction confirmed. The problem is they, the P2P network is Get somehow get overloaded if you if you put more committee members into a P2P network, and we use our signature verification algorithm where you can batch the signature into a very small proof, and instead of sending all the public keys or the bit field in the, uh, I mean in, in the network, you can send a small proof, so it can reduce the P2 the, the burden on the P2P network, and finally you can achieve a single slot finality. And that's all about this talk. Thanks so much. And this is our official website. There's no stuff here.